Hello everyone, I am um, really excited to have uh, with me Mr. R. Gopal Krishnan, uh, the CEO of uh, Mindworks and uh, ex-director of Tata Sons. Uh, great to have you here sir and uh, today's uh, interview will be on uh, digital and digital disruption. Now, and, and focus on culture, I think this is a good segue because you are talking about co-mingling and conversation which I think become the crux of the culture of an organization. So how does uh, the concept of this physical connection with people, have, you know, sitting around a coffee table or, or a meeting room and having a conversation, how does it translate in the virtual world where today companies are, you know, global, they work across, you know, 25, 30 countries. Um, how does that power of belonging and the conversation, how does it translate well in the digital world as well? I think it does, but it's different and that's all right. Yeah, and I take again another metaphor. Ever since civilization came, as we know it, a man had to meet a woman in order to get married. Now the way they got to meet was a particular way 200 years ago. Then 100 years ago it changed again. Then 50 years ago it changed and today also it's changed. And today you can get digitally married. Yeah. And divorced as well. Divorced as well. Right. So uh, this fact that you have all these uh, new programs and applications and so on and I'm not even familiar with all their names but you know every month somebody says well, have you tried that yeah. and why don't we get on to that and it's crystal clear you're able to talk to a guy yeah. uh, who's sitting in California and you know one guy is in his pajamas because it's a 2 o'clock in the morning and the other guy is in the suit because it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I think what has really happened is that whereas the physical movement to a common location and the act of physical aggregation of five people or ten people was the key. Yeah. So you brought people to a conference and they would check in and then they would meet in XYZ room. The pivot now is the issue and the subject. Yeah. And people have learned and are learning. Uh, and I think there's a bit of rewiring of the brain in that. And cultures are changing in that regard. Uh, to say, I'm interested in talking to Rajiv Dayaraman on the subject of X and uh, frankly I am not greatly interested in discussing the subject Y because that, that is better that I do with somebody else. Yeah. And so you are able to not have a good French meal yeah. sitting for four hours, even the French meal is dead by now, but little nibbles yeah. as you go along, you yeah. get enough nutrition for the day yeah. and if I use that metaphor or not sitting down for a big hearty meal, yeah. but having little nibbles, yeah. then digitization is actually compelling you yeah. to change the... Now that is never a substitute, but we can't do everything digitally. Right. You know? uh, but it's uh, definitely changing the culture. Right. I was recently invited to a real estate office to do something or the other, and uh, the whole layout of that office the way all those uh, people, you know, sort of below 30 running around, uh, was bizarre from my point of view. And there was, there was a single cubicle, there was a managing director sitting there, everybody sitting around. And it looked like some frenetic madhouse to my eye. Yeah. The problem was not with them, the problem was with my eye. And when they started to explain how a land deal is made and yeah. what kind of skills are brought together. Yeah without referring to the legal department papers going then it goes around and then comes back. I said, okay, if it works, it works. Yeah. I don't know how to operate that, but yeah. my God, these kids seem to be doing it. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Right. So in the context of change, uh, it seems to me that companies that know how to manage the now and the next uh, do well uh, in, in the face of digital disruption. And the ones that are stuck with them now um, have a lot of trouble. So, in your experience, you know, uh, thinking about and writing about innovation and actually driving innovation in your own organization, what's the secret sauce behind managing the now and the next? 
I don't think there's a secret sauce, uh, frankly. The only thing that you know is whatever I've decided today has a short shelf life. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying a short shelf life. If, if it's a car, in the old days you said this will have a shelf life of 10 years. Yeah. Maybe that became 8, maybe that becomes 6. Maybe then you said I must have 7 of the same stuff. Each of them will have a shelf life of 5. Yeah. You call it modularity, commonization of platforms, commonization of components. The words are different. Yeah. They all mean the same thing. Uh, how to produce more with less. To yeah. use an alternate way. And I think once you are imbued with the sense of a lack of permanence, good old Hindu mythology, yeah. that this is a transitory phase, then you have no difficulty combining the now and the next. Yeah. The problem arises when you see now as one chapter and next as the next chapter. Yeah. And in my view, a good, he doesn't have to be a devout Hindu, but it's in, it is in, in his genes. You know that this is only one birth, yeah. <laughs> the next birth coming. And that imposes certain values and ways and cultures into the guy's mind. Right. Which is, he doesn't even know it's been put into his head. Right. But it's been there from the time yeah. he, was a, he or she was a kid. Now you are referring to a certain amount of detachment from the now. Saying that, hey, this is going Don't to pass change. as well. This is, this is also past. Yeah. And I think that kind of, uh, uh, without sounding saffron about it, uh, the Vedantic way of looking at now, yeah. allows you automatically to accept that there is an next. Yes. But I don't want to overdo this Vedantic part unless somebody think I am got a saffron agenda. Right. Sure. That's an interesting uh, point of view. Um, in, in terms of uh, capabilities that need to be developed in an organization, how do you think about it? In the digital age, as opposed to let's say the industrial age, are there, let's say the top three capabilities you think a digital organization should have? Well, I don't know if you call this a capability because you guys are in the business of uh, capabilities. But uh, the three things that come to my mind, if I if I take out humility and uh, curiosity. curiosity as sort of characteristics yeah. and not necessarily as capabilities, though I think I can't separate characteristic and capability that sharply. Uh, I think the capability to do many things simultaneously, the capability to accept that uh, you may get only one in a hundred ideas through yeah. and the capability to say you have taken a lot of shots at the goal, it's not about one big fat fight. Yeah. Occasionally all these rules will be challenged, so I'm not suggesting that you have to be a slave to these rules, yeah. but I'm talking of normal day to day running of organization. Yes. I mean, you can't keep taking big penalty shootouts <laughs> every morning. Yeah. Once in a while it happens. Yeah. But in, like a soccer match is a good example. Soccer is now the flavor of the month. A lot of dribbles, a lot of agility, a lot of running around and keeping the ball in your position rather than leaving it in the opponent's position. Those are the capabilities that are yes. required. Yes. Uh, and digital enables that. Yeah. But it enables the other guy as well. As well. So, right. Um, and then once in a while you have a big shot at the goal, but the ability to do this is uh, very important as a capability. Sure. See, the old way of playing uh, uh, was not that. Uh, if you look at hockey, how it has changed when I was a kid, uh, you played on turf, you had the ball and you took big swipes at it and it just went sort of went 70 yards, 80 yards, the ball went flying. Yeah. And now you see the way they play hockey, it's not on turf anymore, it's yeah. synthetic material. And the, we used to have something called sticks, which the stick should never, hockey stick should never go beyond your shoulder. <laughs> now nobody has sticks. Yeah. They're sort of running around with the ball. Yeah. That's the difference in digitalization right. compared to the way uh, used to work, uh, the capabilities of yeah. And one of the reasons why the India has come down from the days of the answer to where it is now is the capabilities required to play hockey automatically. Got it. Thank you.